Hey Phil, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net. I am so excited to help you improve your two-handed backhand. Let's get right to the footage. I'm gonna put you side by side with Novak Djokovic. I reverse the video so that he looks left-handed. Let's check it out. So Phil, there are four things we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about your grip, your body movements, and then two things with your swing. And that's the order in which you want to make changes. The order of operations, if you will, if you think about math, and there's the order of operations. In tennis, the order of operations is grip, body, swing, because the swing is built on the foundation of the grip and the body. So you want to go in that order. So first you check the grip, first you check the body movements, then you check the swing. And that's exactly what I did when I looked at your video. It was grip, then body, then swing. Now, I'm going to first show you a slight change I want you to make in your grip. Now, all we have to do to know what grip you have is to zoom in here, and I'm going to get it so that your racket is on its edge. Now, I'm going to draw a straight line down your racket like this, and that tells us where bevel one is. And if we zoom in as far as we can here, you can see that your base knuckle, the base knuckle of your index finger is right basically on the top of the racket. So you truly have a backhand grip, which is going to put the contact point too close to you. It's going to make it hard to flatten out your backhand and really punish your backhand and be able to hit the ball with speed um, if you really need to blast it. Uh, it's going to also make it so you're prone to shanking the ball and hitting the frame because it'll close the racket face uh, a little too much even when you don't want to. So first, let me show you the way I want you to hold the racket so you can have a lot more success striking the ball. So the first hand we're going to talk about is your left hand. We're going to put your base knuckle and your heel pad on bevel number two. Now, bevel two, if you look at the eight bevels, that's bevel one, bevel two, since you're left-handed is there, bevel three, bevel four, right? So it's an octagon. We're going to put these two spots on bevel number two. That's the continental grip. And we're going to place your right hand the base knuckle, and the heel pad on bevel number seven. Remember, one is on top, two is there. That's where you're going to be putting your left hand. This is bevel three and around all the way to bevel number seven. So you're going to place the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad on bevel seven. Now that we know where you're going to be holding the racket, now it's time to make sure that you are moving your body correctly. Now, there's a big difference between what Novak does on a closed stance compared to what you're doing. Now, we'll see Novak here on the left. And yes, this is Novak. It's again, he's just, I, I reversed the video. You'll notice that he brings his right leg, his back leg, which is exactly what you're doing. Both of you look identical here when it comes to what your legs are, how your legs are positioned. But watch what Novak does with his right foot. See how he swings it around? He brings his right foot around and actually finishes with his left foot on the left and his right foot on the right. And that allows his hips to turn. So watch his right hip. Watch his right hip as he goes through here and his hip turns. It's so important that you bring your right leg around when you are hitting in a closed stance. You'll notice that you do not bring your right leg around and your legs stay crossed. In fact, it never goes. You actually step back with your left foot. You actually take your left foot and step over to the left rather than letting your right leg swing to the right. And you do this ball after ball. Here's another one. You step across. Now, you should take your right leg, and you should swing it around, and it should end up over here, just like Novak. This is going to make sure that you turn your hips. If you look here, your hips are not turned, right? So your upper body is trying to turn, but your hips can't turn because you're not allowing that right foot to swing around. And that's what's going to be so great about using the Topspin Pro is we're going to be able to practice this and groove this over and over and over again. So we have to make sure that we have the correct grip, but then next that we're letting that right leg swing around whenever we're hitting a close stance. If I go back here and I show you a couple of Novak's backhands, even this one, watch how he finishes and his right foot is still on the right. So you do not want to hit with your legs crossed. You want your left leg on the left 
and your right leg on the right. You do not want your legs crossed. It just means that you cannot turn your hips, which is vital to swinging the way you want to in order to hit your best shots. All right, so now we're going to go to Novak hitting some incredible backhands here. And let's look at the first thing in the swing that I want to talk to you about. And that is the way you take your racket back. So you can see your racket immediately go down. And as you know, when the racket goes down immediately in this position, it does two things. One, it's a, it's actually a shorter distance, right? Which means you don't have to swing as fast and you don't get gravity assisted racket speed. The racket should stay up and then drop and then swing. Again, this is so that it has less muscle recruitment. You'll be able to disguise a drop shot easier because you can turn high. You can see Novak, he's turning high here. He could easily disguise a drop shot. He could return a fast serve. He could take the ball early and like at shoulder height the way Connors used to. If you think about Connors and Agassi taking the ball early at shoulder height and approaching the net, there are so many benefits to keeping the racket up. When you notice Djokovic take the racket back, you'll notice this is what's called point the strings to the crowd, where his strings are facing off to the right and the tip of his racket is pointing up. This is possible because of his right elbow. It's really important that when we take the racket back, that our right elbow is away from the body. And I'm going to show you this when I'm back in front of the camera hitting on the Top Spin Pro, but it's vital that the elbows are out away from the body and not jammed in. So I'm going to show you how to keep the tip of the racket up. This is kind of what you call two heads are better than one, where the racket head and your head are going to be at a similar height. And then here is what I think separates Djokovic from the rest of the world when it comes to the way he hits his backhand. I want you to notice, Phil, How he finishes, or as he swings, he keeps what is called the right side of the letter V. If I draw a letter V using his racket as the right side of the letter V, he finishes with the racket staying to the right of his hands the entire time. As he swings up, he never lets the racket go over to the left of his hands. Since he's left-handed here in the video, he wants to keep the racket to the right of his hands. And that means his strings will be facing slightly up after he's done hitting the ball. This ensures consistency, literally, because your wrists and your forearms, you don't snap or roll anything. I want you to watch how you finish. And this is how most players finish. This is how, this is how Steve Johnson, Stevie, finishes his backhand. Now, he's the equivalent, but as a right-hander, but you can see your strings are pointing down, where Novak is completely the opposite. He's on the right side of the V. Again, the beauty of this is it keeps the wrist position intact. Now, this is a little, this video is a little grainy because I had to zoom in, but if we look at his arm, his forearm, and his racket, there is an angle here. If we zoom in, you can see you have no angle. You could put a popsicle stick flat against your wrist. And really, from your racket to your wrist is a pretty much a straight line. Remember, Novak is like this. That means his wrist is laid back, which means he has the same wrist position he had at contact. You do not have the same wrist position. See the angle here? Here's the angle. Well, Novak keeps that angle. Look how similar the two of you look right here. Here's the angle. You have the exact same angle in the right wrist. Novak keeps that angle throughout contact and in, oops, sorry, throughout contact and in the finish. You, my friend, lose that angle. And you can see that in your wrist here, how it's perfectly flat. That means you are doing what's called casting, where you're letting your wrist flick and roll. And that changes where your strings point very quickly throughout the contact zone. So you don't really have a contact zone, you more have a contact point. So let me go out in front of the camera again, and we're going to talk about the grip. We're going to talk about your body and being able to turn your hips. 
We're going to talk about keeping the racket head up, and we're going to talk about the Novak Djokovic finish that is going to completely transform your backhand and make it your most consistent shot. All right, Phil, super cool to see you side by side with Novak Djokovic. Let's talk about the grip. So I put the two spots on my hands and we've got the grip. And bevel number one is on top. Bevel two is this 45 degree angle bevel on the top left side, since you're left-handed. And we're gonna put our left hand, those two spots, on bevel number two, that continental grip. Well, we call it continental. I think you guys over across the pond call it the chopper grip. And then you're gonna put your right hand, your top hand, on bevel number seven. So when you hold the racket that way, it's gonna allow you to be able to do both spin and be able to drive the ball. The way you're holding on to the racket is producing a ton of spin, but you're gonna frame the ball a lot and not be able to really drive and crush a backhand, which I want you to be able to do. So now that you're gonna be holding the racket in a way that's gonna help you improve, the next thing I want you to do is work on turning the hips. Because right now you hit the ball and you're doing this. You're hitting and your legs are crossed, which is impeding hip turn, which is not going to allow you to extend out towards your target and lengthen out your hitting zone. So we have to make sure the hips turn. So you can do that with an an open stance or a semi-open stance. You can do it with a neutral stance where that back foot comes up on the toe. But if you step across, which you were doing on all those backhands, and I'm not saying that the closed stance is right or wrong. You gotta be able to use different stances as we just saw Novak. But you have to make sure that when you use a closed stance that you bring your right foot around. So practice this. Even if you take the racket down low, that's fine. You got your new grip, hit the backhand, and then let your right leg swing around. This is what I call, in fact, I just practiced this with a student today, a 10-year-old boy. We practiced what I call the closed stance fallout. So it's the closed stance fall out, and you fall out of it with your right foot. So it's this move. This is gonna allow you to turn your hips, and I just showed you Novak doing this. So whenever you're hitting a closed stance, don't keep your foot where it is, then your legs are crossed, and then you can't turn your hips, and you're off balance, and you almost feel like a pretzel, because you're all, you're all like scrunched up. You gotta let that right leg come around. Here's what it looks like from the front. I hit, let the right leg come around. So it's hit first, then let the leg come around. And you're just gonna do this over and over and over again. Once we make sure that we've got the grip and we make sure that we're truly turning our hips and we're finishing with our right foot on the right, I mean, that's why it's called our right foot. Our right foot is called our right foot because it's on the right. The next thing is to work on the turn. So let's check this out. When you begin, First, make sure that your elbows are away from your body. This is so common. In fact, if I grab, here we go. This will be perfect. If I grab these two kid balls and I put them under my armpits, you should raise your elbows until the balls fall out. So watch this. I'm going to raise my elbows. Balls fall out. Now my elbows are in the right spot. As weird as this feels, It's called a ready position for a reason. It's not called a starting position, and it's not called a waiting position. It's called a ready position. Why? Because we want our elbows ready in case it's a forehand, elbow up, backhand, elbow up. Most students of mine who I see practicing, I see them with their elbows in, and then when they turn their elbows in and the racket's open and they turn and the racket's open, and it just wreaks havoc for the rest of their swing. So to truly be ready, let's get the elbows out away from your body. So from the side, it looks like this. My elbows are out, and I tell my students I should be able to smell their armpits, so they're not like this. Elbows out. You'll notice the height of my racket. So the easiest way to practice this is to turn and change your grip and put the racket behind you, and you'll notice my right elbow is up because if my elbow drops, then my racket opens, which makes it harder for me to actually swing the way Djokovic just did. When my back elbow is up, and you can see my elbow is up in my hand, it's basically level from my elbow to my hand is level. When I move my racket correctly, if I just turn around and face my racket, I'm in a ready position again. So watch this. I'm going to turn and change my grip, and then I'm just going to turn back around and face my racket. So I'm taking my racket back 
180 degrees, my body is turning 90, and then I'm gonna turn my body another 90 and face my racket. So this is how you practice the correct take back. The correct take back is just a ready position behind you. You could take a, I wish I had a coin. Do I have a coin? I don't know if I have a coin here on my, kind of my junk table with all my goodies. I've got a little plastic thing. I don't have a coin at the moment, but that's okay. I'm just gonna put this little plastic piece on my racket. And my goal, and I do this with coins all the time with my students, your goal is to turn, I've got something on my, it's basically a coin, like a plastic coin, on my racket, and I didn't let the coin fall off. Now look, I'm gonna turn around and face my racket. So obviously I was just trying to let it drop there. So I'm gonna turn my body, change my grip, and then turn back around and face my racket again. The proper take back on a two-handed backhand is taking the racket back 180 degrees, and the way you practice that, by turning your body 90, grip change, taking the racket back 180, the way you know you did it correctly is if you turn around, go back to your forehand grip, and you're in a ready position. Obviously, the way you're taking your racket back right now, if you were to turn around, you'd be like this, which is not your ready position. Here is the secret to hitting a Novak Djokovic backhand. And it's actually all in the finish. When Novak, and, and I put you in the exact same position, you remember this angle between your forearm and your racket. And prior to contact, you and Novak, Novak looked extremely similar. The difference actually was after contact. When Novak came up, he still had that angle. Again, the left side of the letter V. That means his wrist was laid back. Let me put this right in front of the camera so you can see this. Let me look at it. There we go. See this angle in my wrist? You currently are like this, where your wrist is flat. You could, again, you could put a popsicle stick on. So at some point, slightly before, during contact, slightly after contact, and if you do it slightly after contact, you're fine. But, but who knows when you're doing it, right? And, and if you have an off day on your backhand, it means you're hap it's happening before you ever hit the ball. You are hitting and then moving the racket to the left side of your hand. The reason I don't like it when players do that, and yes, do you see players doing that on the Pro Tour? Yes, you see Zverev doing that. Yes, you see Nadal doing that as a lefty. They, they make that move where the strings are closed after they hit the ball. The problem with that is, is to be honest, Phil, you and I combined, if you combine our athleticism, it does not equal Novak Djokovic. Just like if you and I combine our net worths, it doesn't equal Elon Musk. <laughs> it doesn't equal Jeff Bezos. Like there's a reason they are, they are the best players sometimes of all time, or a top five player of all time. Their athleticism and what they can do is incredible. So we have to do what is possible for us. And there are some pros who swing the way you and I can swing and, and get away with it. And Novak just happens to be, when it comes to his backhand, one of those players. His backhand is so simple because he keeps the wrist position all the way through the finish. And then if you actually think of it, if I actually put a birthday hat on my head, and obviously you know this from my serve, you could say that he, and I'd almost need a taller birthday hat, but he basically brings the racket in over his head, knocking off the birthday hat on the finish. Now again, I'm, I'm kind of having to scrunch it. I wish I had a taller birthday hat, but you could see my racket go up over the birthday hat, where you can see yours on the finish, you're like this and you would never hit the birthday hat. Again, the beauty of keeping the right side of the letter V, and trust me, Novak Djokovic can spin the heck out of the backhand. The beauty is there's no wrist movement. You have wrist movement, which changes the angle of the racket face very quickly during the moment of impact, the most important moment, the contact, and that will change and create variation that makes it very difficult, especially because of the grip system you have. You have to be even more perfect, and you have a casting of the wrist 
that makes for a lot of variance in the contact point. So it just doesn't mesh well with the grip system that you currently have. So let's go over it. We got the grip right, right? We're gonna put our bottom hand on two and our top hand on seven. We're gonna make sure that as we finish, we are letting the right hip or the right foot come around so our hips can turn. Next, we're gonna make sure that our elbows are out and that we're turning 180 degrees back. If you notice, if I face the camera, change my grip back to the forehand, it is my ready position. There's the turn for the backhand. That's how Novak Djokovic turns for his backhand. And then if he just turns around and faces his racket, he's in this position. And then last, make sure that you, as you finish, and again, this is only possible if your right foot is coming over to the right, keep the wrist angle. At first, Phil, I'm actually gonna ask you to stop here from the side, watch this. Don't finish over your shoulder at first. Just hit and finish out in front. Where I drew the green V on Novak, that's where I want you to finish. So if I drop my racket, the racket dropped in front of me. So you're gonna finish very high, kinda higher than I am at the moment, but I, I've got a ceiling here. <laughs> so I'm in my basement, so I can't go super high, but I want you way out and high, but the racket to the right of your hand. And then you'll work on just bending the racket over your shoulder. One last thing I forgot to mention, I can't believe I forgot this. If you go back into the video, you'll see this. In fact, let me show you this right now. Um, Novak, his left elbow, when, since he was left-handed, it was his left elbow. I wanna show you his left elbow here, and I'm gonna show you how your elbow is non-existent. So let me show you that really quickly, and then I'll, I'll recap and come back in front of the camera. So watch where Novak's left elbow finishes. See all this space? There should be a lot of space under your left armpit. That's possible because he turned his hips and his racket stayed to the right. And like, by the way, this is where I want you to finish, right there. It's out in front, right side of the letter V. Your racket's gonna be the right side of the letter V. Again, watch yours. We don't see any elbow. Your Left arm is like this, and then your bicep is, is, I'm sorry, and then your bicep is there. So this line right here is your forearm, and then this would be your bicep. And then obviously that's your elbow. You, we cannot see your left elbow. We can see Novak's, but we cannot see yours. So you should be here and then there. Just like Novak, that's his bicep, that's his forearm. You should all be right there. And then the racket will be to the left, sorry, to the right of your hand, just like no Novak has. That is the proper finish that shows itself when your hips turn correctly and your racket swings up just like Novak. So what a difference, right, Phil? That left elbow being up for Novak and your elbow being like this. From the front, it looks like this. This was Novak's elbow. This was your elbow. It was jammed in because you're making this move and the rackets to the left of your hands where Novak was keeping it to the right. Work on the grip, and, I, and I'm excited because I wanna help you through this, so hopefully we can do multiple videos here to take you step by step through this and transform your backhand in 30 days. So please send me videos of you practicing the grip, the foot coming around. I wanna see a video of you doing this, hitting the, you can do it on a Top Spin Pro, that's the beauty of it. Let that right foot come around so that your hips are turning. Show me you turning 180 degrees and then turning around and facing your racket. And then show me videos of you practicing the right side of the letter V on the finish with this elbow out. You show me those things, I'm telling you, Phil, you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. Thank you so much for allowing me to make this video on your backhand, Phil. I'm so excited to see the, the process and see the improvement. And uh, I got one last thing to say. You got this.